Hello everyone, all right, so we're gonna talk about how short of a board should you ride. I am not a professional rider. Um, I am a 41 year old uh, professional that enjoys snowboarding. Uh, I've been snowboarding, I snowboarded for almost 15 years when I was younger back on a Nitro Pyro and a Kemper and when snowboarding just came out I was very fortunate to live in Madison, Wisconsin which had Tyro Basin had the best half pipe in the Midwest. It was so awesome. Um, since then I guess they got rid of it. Uh, now I'm in Minnesota and I go to Afton Alps which is the um, they have a very good park course. They don't have a half pipe. Uh, the one that we do have is called Buck Hill and I don't go to that one. Um, I've got into more uh, trick flat riding because I'm teaching my children how to ride. Um, and so I spent a lot of time last year on the bunny hill with them. And since I was there, I was like, cool, I want to learn butters and um, flat tricks and stuff like that. So I wanted to know how short of a board should I ride? I am six foot four, six, three, 230 pounds. None of the scales or none of the charts out there recommend me riding anything below 160, right? Uh, that I did not like. Uh, so the first board I bought was a 155 name dropper, right? This is a 2016 name dropper, I believe. And the way that I bought it was in 2017, it was still sitting around um, at a shop. And so this board was originally 399. I got it for 299 because it was, uh, it was sitting around. One, people didn't care for this graphic of these guys on the sled and stuff like that. I believe they changed the graphic the next year and now they've gone away with the name dropper altogether, I believe. Um, it did have the pads on it, right? So that's a 155. And so uh, my next board, it didn't have enough flex for me. Uh, I went to uh, 156 signal, park signal, right? No graphics, love that signal. And so I went to this. I really love the flex on this. I could start, uh, I could really butter it really easily. Um, it doesn't have, it has an, English is great today. Uh, the torsional flex wasn't as much as I liked. And I was on the hill and this guy was just torsioning this board. And I was like, you know, and whenever you, I'll give you a tip. If you see someone on the hill, with a board that you like the flex on, just walk up to them and be like, what kind of board is that? And they will talk to you. They should talk to you. They should be nice, right? Uh, so I ride, so to disclose this, I ride on groomers. That's all we have. We don't get much powder in Minnesota. When we do, they beat it down within a day. That being said, I don't care for much powder because I mean, literally, it, we don't have very, steep hills here, they're hills, they're not even mountains. If you're riding a mountain with powder, I could enjoy that all day long. I'd be riding my stance back. Here we're riding groomers. I'm looking to do spin tricks. I'm looking to do side hits. Uh, we do have parks. I haven't got to into doing rails yet. Um, I'm older, so I've got to consider uh, falling down and getting hurt is going to affect my income. Um, you're younger, you, you can take more risks. Um, that being said, all the charts say that I should be riding something 160. I went, since I have three boards, I decided to go to this Arbor Draft because it, I saw someone on the hill and I said, what kind of board is that? Because it just flexed, like it had torsional flex, which is turning it, you know, like this. And then it also had a parabolic rocker, which the signal is flat camber. And this is parabolic rocker, which means it lifts uh, under the feet and between the feet. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna take a risk because I wanna be able to spin a board better. And it doesn't matter how tall you are or how much you weigh because it all depends on probably your ab strength. And so being older, um, I want less spinning or less you know, weight when it comes to a snowboard. So I went to a 151. And uh, I didn't find any videos out there that anyone would say, hey, I ride a 151 or I ride a, you know, and I Googled what does Sean White ride and all that. And it says he rides a 154. A lot of the pros ride a 154, but I don't know if that's all, you know, what they say and what they do, because I know in golf, 
their golf clubs, their professional ones, are usually a club up versus what they sell in the store. So when they're hitting a five iron, it's really a four iron. You know, they have complete custom clubs. And the pros in snowboarding probably have complete custom boards. They're probably some whacked out numbers like a 152 and a half or something like that, or three quarters, because that's they've tuned those boards to how they ride. They want them to win gold medals and advertise. So anyways, uh, that being said, how short of a board can you ride? Well, if you really question it, go to a demo days, they have them, just call up your local ski resort and Burton will have them. Uh, I, Arbor, I haven't seen too much advertising for Arbor on them. Um, Signal, I haven't seen too much uh, because they don't have the, I don't believe they have the resources yet. Um, to do it. Uh, also, don't be afraid to try other boards um, if you can get them cheap. You know, I mean, Burton builds one of the best boards out there. I don't believe they build one of the most flexi boards because they worry about the pop being lost. But the way people buy snowboards these days, they buy them for every season. So pop being lost, I mean, there's so many boards out there that are recyclable, right? And uh, so this is the difference between, right now you're seeing the difference between a 156 and a 151. So get it closer so you can actually see the difference. Uh, let's do them toe to toe. All right, there is a difference between a 151 Arbor and a 155 or 56 Sig. That is the difference right there. Um, it should be more than, well, no, it's not, that's right. But that is the difference between that. You wanna see what the name dropper looks like compared to it? So are you really losing that much? If that two inches that you see or whatever, yeah, two inches, so many centimeters. So that's a 155 name dropper versus a 151 Arbor Draft. Uh, as far as size wise, Really interesting on how the spoons, well, that's because the binding is catching. Um, so as far as size wise, I haven't noticed a difference. Uh, I, this I can spin better. I love spinning this thing. You know, it has the spooned off tail and tip, uh, which make it easier. So that being said, um, I, I really enjoy this Arbor Draft uh, for flex wise. Uh, it may be too choppy for some of you out there. That's why I say go to the demo days, try it out. Um, try out a 151 versus a 154, um, whether it's on hits or speed. Um, that I still have to get into the park and get used to jumping more. And so as I do, um, I will go between the three boards to figure out which one. Um, and I'll keep on doing update reviews on these. Uh, hopefully I don't buy a new board next year. Um, because obviously I spend money on boards. I will, I want to do um, a video on the step-in bindings. Um, I noticed that no one's using those. I mean, people are, they're sold out, but as far as, I mean, the Olympics just went on and Sean White wasn't riding with step-in bindings. Um, that being said, uh, you know, it's still a new technology, step-on bindings. So, but back to this, this uh, for my video, can you ride a 151? Being taller, you know, six foot, and also um, 200 plus pounds, plus size 13 boot, like I said before in a video, my toe or my heel does hang off. I haven't noticed any difference because even when I'm carving full out, it, you know, maybe because of my weight that it doesn't cause it, if it's dragging, it's still cutting through the snow. I have thought about shaving it off, that little part, but as far as the bottom one, you know, and I'm at, I think I'm at 18 on my front and nine or either nine or five degree negative. So I'm not duck footed too much. You know, um, I do like my front foot being a little turned so that I can um, go into the ramps better. So I wear a 13 boot, just so you understand how wide this board isn't, um, but it's not affecting me too much riding these freestyle Burton bindings. Um, but maybe I'll attach a GoPro to my board and, uh, and uh, watch and see if it is dragging for you guys. Uh, and then maybe I shave it off. I, I'm old school. 
Uh, back when we started snowboarding, we would, bo we would bolt snowboard rails to the bottom of our heels to keep the toe slip from, uh, the bindings hurt like shit back then. And we had to keep our boots in the bindings better so we would attach rails so that our, basically our heels would click in, kind of like a step in um, back then. Uh, my first board was a uh, Sims uh, 155, one, uh, 160, something like that. And it actually had a cool uh, Sims skateboard nose, just like the old uh, Christian Hasoy skateboard. Um, that's how, I don't even know if Sims build snowboards anymore, but uh, yeah, so how short can you ride? Uh, sorry that I've gone through this, but I wanted to give you the full detail of what I have, what I ride, what I just went out and did. And I spent $399 on this board. Um, I'll put a link on where I found it because Arbor Drafts sell out fast. They don't sell a lot. Um, they don't go on sale much. I was worried about it um, because we're in 2018 and it was the 2017 model. And so I was worried about some of these sites and I'll put the site that I bought it on and uh, they actually give you free shipping and guaranteed that you'll get that board. Uh, so I was surprised to find it there. Um, so I'll put that site link down below. Um, other than that, uh, I'd say if you wanna try riding a shorter board so that you can do spin tricks, if you're going out west and you're gonna be riding deep, then you need to follow those charts and you know, if you're riding different kind of surfaces other than packed snow like I am, then yes, don't pay attention to this video because I don't know shit about that. I don't ride out there. But if you're riding groomers and you're riding flat and you're in the park and you want a board that spins, you know, then you're gonna, I recommend riding a 151 or a 154 um, no matter what size you are because um, that's my opinion because this is what I'm riding and I love it. I love that I can jib on it. I love that I can do, I do boxes now. I haven't done rails yet, but I love the fact that I can press and butter the hell out of this board all day long without putting too much strain on it. I love the pop and the parabolic rocker uh, compared to the flats. Um, I'm still happy with the flats, but so my summary is go out, to a demo day if you really consider riding a shorter board look at how you're going to ride you know uh, if you're going to go ride go go rent a board wherever you plan on riding and then run if you see a snowboarder doing the tricks you want to do or something like that walk up to them and ask them hey what do you think of that board and most people are going to be nice and i'd sit there and tell you all day i love this thing right and Hopefully everyone is like that in the snowboarding community and uh, you know, see what size they recommend, what size they are. You know, when I said that I was gonna get a 151, everyone thought I was crazy. And I'll show you videos of me riding and you can tell me whether or not you think this board's too small. But I also have two 155s if I need one. And you know, I don't have toe drag or anything like that and I've been riding for years. Uh, so it really it's up to you and that's what every video is going to tell you because every person is different. For me, 151 Arbor Draft, uh, I might do a 151 Park again, um, depending on what comes out. Um, maybe I'll do a Burton, who knows. Um, I'll keep these reviews going and riding every year. And uh, But right now, I'd say, yeah, if you want to spin and do butters and stuff like that, um, it's not bad going shorter. Uh, it hasn't affect me. Uh, but once again, try it yourself, figure out if you like it or not. So, all right, till our next video, have a good one.